In this video, you'll learn exactly how to use Dolly 3 to generate AI-powered images inside of your bubble app. In our example today, we'll build a blogging platform that allows users to create AI-generated thumbnail images for each post. Now, if you don't have any coding experience, please do not stress. You don't need to know how to code for this video. Instead, I'll be holding your hand throughout the entire process as I walk through the exact step-by-step -step instructions you need to follow. Look, by this point, I've already said enough. Let's just dive right into it and we can get started. Within my tutorial today, what I've done is I've laid out a checklist of every single item that I want to cover and explain to you in detail. So as you can see, there's quite a bit of a list here that we're going to be adding into our bubble editor. Now, of course, I'll be sure to include a link to this checklist in the description of this video. So that way you can also make a copy of it and follow along with me. When it comes to my checklist, I personally just use a tool called Notion. What I love is that it allows me to just tick items off and it's super straightforward. But as you can see at the top of my list today, the very first thing I'd like to do is walk you through a demo of exactly what we're gonna build. So if I was to jump over into a separate browser here, what you'll see is that I have a bit of an application that I've already created. Now in my example today, what we're gonna do is create almost like a blogging platform. So users will be able to create blog posts and within each blog post, they can add a title, a body, and also a thumbnail image. But what happens if a user doesn't have a thumbnail image that they'd like to use? That of course is where we can leverage generative AI. So you'll see here below my picture uploader, I have this text that says, don't have an image, generate a custom thumbnail here. And when I click on this, it opens up this drop down menu. And this of course is where our users can add in the prompt for the AI image that they would like to generate. And look, I've already taken the time to write a custom prompt out today, so I'm gonna paste this in. What I want is a photorealistic image of the Transformer Optimus Prime sitting on a cruise ship drinking a cocktail. Surrounding him are fans wanting his autograph and taking pictures. I'm gonna also select that my image should be a square, so it's gonna be 1024 by 1024 pixels. I'll then choose to generate this here. Bubble's gonna send that through to OpenAI. It's gonna work its magic. And as you'll see, it's just generated the exact image that I'm looking for. So how on earth did we get to this point? What we can do is jump back over to my main browser here. And first of all, just tick off that I finished showing you a quick demo of our product. And now from here, this is where the real work begins. When we're creating an integration with OpenAI, particularly the image generation model Dolly 3, what we need to use is the API connector inside a bubble so we can connect these two different platforms. So let's open up a brand new bubble editor here. Now I've already taken the time to design the interface of my app, but I'm not interested in showing you that right now. I'll do that later on. What we need to do right now is actually open up our plugins tab. And as you'll see, I've already taken the time to install the plugin known as the API connector. So if you don't have this, you'll need to do this now. So just open up your plugin library. And the very first plugin is the API connector, which is a free plugin built by Bubble. Perfect. And look, it's at this point in time that we can now go ahead and create our first API that we want to connect. So we're going to select the option to add another API here. And the first thing we'll need to do is give this a name. I'm going to call this open AI. So the name of this API is the service that you're going to connect with. So the overall platform. And once we've given a name to this API, we now need to create a connection using an API key. So if you're not familiar with working with APIs, please don't stress. I know that if you're relatively new to Bubble, they can seem a bit overwhelming, and trust me, they were for me as well. An API is just essentially a way of creating a connection between two different services. So let's say over here we have Bubble, and over here we have OpenAI. We need to create a way for these two services to send and receive data between each other. And in order to create that connection, we need to source what's known as an API key. So as the name would suggest, a key is like something that opens up a door and it's gonna open up a gateway or a pathway between these two platforms. So in order to source your API key, you're gonna to need to create an OpenAI account. So if I was to jump back over into my checklist here, you'll see that I've included a link to the OpenAI documentation. What you'll need to do is click on this and it's gonna open up a tab and take you through to the documentation page that we're gonna be following today. But before we follow any of this documentation here, what we need to do is source our very own API key. And if you were to head on over to the left-hand menu, you'll see there's an option to view your API keys. Now, at this point in time, I already have a couple of API keys because I've used them for previous tutorials. But if you don't have one, or if you don't even have an OpenAI account, please just take the time to register an account and then create your own API key. 
So I'm gonna create a secret key right now. So when I select on this, I'm just gonna to need to give this a name. I'm gonna call mine the Dolly Tutorial Key, but you can call yours whatever you would like. I'm then gonna to choose to create this secret key. Then once I've generated that secret key, I'm gonna make a copy of this and jump back over into my bubble editor. Because what I'll now need to do is paste this in inside of my API here. So that way my bubble application has permission to talk to my OpenAI account. So that's what that key is for. Now, when it comes to adding in your API key, what you'll need to do is update the way in which Bubble is going to authenticate with OpenAI. So that pretty much just means everything I've just discussed. So being able to create the connection between two services is known as authentication because you're giving something the authority to connect with a service. Now for this here, what we need to do is open up our drop down menu and select the option known as the private key in header. Now, how do I know how to do that? If I was to just jump back over to my OpenAI account and then revert back to that documentation page I'd shown you. If we scroll on down, you're gonna see this little structured piece of code here. Now, although this might look incredibly confusing for you, don't stress because I'm gonna explain what every single thing in this means. And look, if you were to strip away all of the code formatting, so things like all of the asterisks, the brackets, or even all of the dashes, there's actually not too much information in here at all. One thing I should point out though, is that when you're viewing this little bit of code here, please make sure you're viewing this as the curl option, not the Python or the Node.js. We're gonna be using the curl format today. And the reason is because the curl format integrates with Bubble much easier. In fact, there are ways that you can copy and paste this curl across into your Bubble app. But today I wanna to create this connection manually so I can walk you through all of the steps involved. So that way you actually learn how to interpret this API connection. Now back to my point that I was making before I got sidetracked here, how do I know which authentication version to choose from my drop down menu? So the option I selected here was the private key in header. Now, if we revert to this code here, what you'll see is that there's a couple of different lines inside of this text here. And at the top here, there's these lines known as the H lines. These are the header values. And I can see here that there's an authorization inside of the header. And next to that authorization is where it says to add in your OpenAI key. So that's why I know that the authorization is in fact in the header. And once you select that, as you'll see, Bubble's automatically going to call this the authorization key. But all we need to do is now paste in the value of our OpenAI key. But as you'll see inside of this code here, we're not just pasting in the actual key value. We also just need to type in the word bearer in front of this API key. Now look, this is a pretty standard practice for a lot of APIs. It's not just OpenAI. In my opinion, this is just a way of formatting that you are the bearer of this API key. So you're the person who owns it. So what we're gonna do is copy all of this across here. So we're gonna copy the word bearer as well as where it says to add your OpenAI key. I'll then jump back into Bubble and paste that inside of my key value field. But what I'll now need to do is just replace the dummy OpenAI API key with my own. So I'm just gonna select here and paste my key in. Now something I should just highlight is that it is very important that you spell bearer the exact same way that OpenAI has laid it out in their documentation. So it will need a capital B, and after the word bearer, you will need to add a space. If you don't include these two things, your connection will not work. But once you paste it in your API key, you now have the authorization to connect with OpenAI, which look is a pretty big deal. In fact, what I'd like to do is just jump back into my Notion checklist and tick off that we've finished installing the API connector, we created our API connection, grabbed our API key, and we've also taken a look at the OpenAI documentation. And this is where the fun part begins. Within this API connection, we need to create what's known as our very first API call. So if the overall service that we connected to was OpenAI, the call we're gonna be referencing is the particular service inside of OpenAI that we would like to use. And that of course is going to be the Dolly 3 service. So next up on my list here is building that out. So if we jump back into Bubble and scroll on down, after you've taken the time to structure your overall API connection, we can now add all of our services inside of it. So we need to give our name to our very first service here. So I'm gonna expand this out and I'm going to of course call the name of this Dolly3. And after naming this API, we just need to update what type of API call this is going to be. 
So when it comes to APIs, because you're connecting with third-party services, you'll most likely want to receive data from those services or send data to those services. And so if you open up this drop-down menu, you're going to see two options. And this is pretty much exactly what I just mentioned. So if you're pulling data from a third-party service, so if let's say you're creating like a stock trading platform and you want to pull the real-time stock prices, you would need to select the data option because you're pulling data in. However, if you want to send information to a third-party service, like we're doing today, we're going to be sending a prompt through to the Dolly 3 service. This will need to be an action. So we need to select this option here. When it comes to the data type, we're going to be leaving this as the JSON format. So Bubble's going to be returning the value in some code. And the way it's going to return that value is it's going to send the URL of an image that it's generated. And then we can, of course, save that image inside of our database. I will need to, however, update the type of way we're going to be sending this API call. So similar to what I mentioned with our use as action here, we're not going to be pulling data from a service. We're going to be posting data to a service. So I'm going to select this post option. So when we're posting data, we need to know where to send that. And the best way to explain that is kind of like in a real world situation, if you were to send a letter to my home address, you would need my address. And so let's imagine my name is Dolly3 and you want to mail me a prompt. And when I receive that letter, I open it, I'll view that prompt, I'll draw you a beautiful picture that looks exactly like your prompt and then send it back to you. So in order for me to receive that prompt, you need to know my address. And thankfully, this one is super straightforward to grab. All you need to do is open up your OpenAI documentation. And if you look at the very first line of all of this code here, the URL that they provide is the actual address. So we're just going to highlight this, make a copy of it, jump back into Bubble and paste that in. And look at this point, we are making great progress. We're almost there. If I look at the OpenAI documentation though, I can just see that inside of the header value, it also has something known as the content type. And so this is just referring to the formatting in which we need to be able to send data through to OpenAI service. And in this case, they want it to be JSON. So what we're going to need to do is make a copy of this header and add it into the header of this specific API call. So I'm going to highlight the words content type. I'm going to make a copy of those. We're going to jump back into bubble here. And as you'll see, we now have the option to add in a header for this specific API call similar to how you could add a header inside of the overall API key. But what you just need to remember is that if you were to add the header into the overall API key, any service you add inside of that overall API is going to have that exact same header setting applied to it. Now, while that might be great for things like our API key, because every single time we connect to OpenAI, we're going to be using the exact same API key. When it comes to things like the content type though, each open AI service has a different content type. So for instance, if you were sending an image through to Dolly3, you're going to be using JSON. However, if you wanted to create a separate API call and connect to something like the Whisper model, which is their speech to text model, you're going to need to send through an audio file. So the content type is going to be different. So that's why I personally just like to create the content type on the header for each individual API call. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to add our header and for the key value, I'm going to paste in the content type the exact same way it was spelled. So with two capitals and no space, instead it has a dash. I then need to jump back into my documentation and copy across the value that it wants. So application slash JSON. So for my value, I'll add that in. Now I am going to make sure that this is selected as private. And this just means that we can't change this within our workflow in a moment whenever we want to call this API. So this will permanently be this value. And look, I'm completely okay with that because as I said, this is not going to change. Now, one of the very last things we need to build out here is all of the parameters that we're going to send through with each individual API call. So what on earth are parameters? Parameters are essentially just a fancy way of saying that these are the bits of data we're going to send through to our Dolly 3 model. And if you notice inside of our documentation here, we have a couple of different parameters. So there's the model, there's the actual prompt that someone's going to type in. There's the number of images we should generate. There's the size of the image. So that's four bits of data that we just need to identify when we send our call through to OpenAI. And so what we're going to do is actually copy all of these parameters across. It's nice and straightforward. We're just going to copy from the open bracket to the closed bracket jump back into bubble. And if we scroll on down, 
we're gonna paste these inside of the input field. And just like that, that is how you can create your very first API call. So at this point in time, if you were to initialize this call, what you'll see is that you'll be able to successfully make a connection. And if you have created a successful connection, you'll see this pop up here. And this just means that it's going to match all of the different parameters with a different type of data that can be stored inside of your app. But look, there are a few changes I'm gonna make before I save this. So I'm just gonna quickly hit cancel because right now, every single time we create and send an API call through, our parameters currently have static values. And of course, if there's one thing you probably learned throughout your time building in Bubble, it is the difference between static and dynamic values. Static values essentially just mean we're sending through these exact values every single time the API is referenced. So every time we connect to Dolly 3, it's gonna send through the exact same prompt, which is a white Siamese cat. So it's gonna generate the exact same image, and that image is going to be the exact same size. Now for our end users today, that is not the experience we wanna create. We wanna give our users the ability to type in their own custom prompts as well as select their own custom dimensions for this particular image that they wanna generate. So how can we allow them to do this? What you can do when you're working with APIs is create a dynamic parameter. And as you'll see above this input field, Bubble actually lays out how you can do this. So all you have to do is add one of the open triangle brackets here, or I guess you could say the greater than or less than symbol, and that will then become a dynamic value. So for our prompt here, what I'm gonna do is highlight the static text, which is a white Siamese cat. And I'm gonna choose to replace that with an open triangle, or I guess you could say the less than symbol. And then I'm just gonna assign a name to this dynamic value. I'm gonna call this the prompt, and then I'm gonna add in the greater than symbol. And what this now means is that we can replace this word prompt here with an actual prompt that a user types in inside of the interface of our app, which I'll show you in a moment. But as you'll see, when I click away here, it's going to verify that we now have a dynamic parameter. But while you're testing and building your application, you will just need to add a dummy value into this field here. So I'm just gonna paste in the initial value that OpenAI provided, which was a white Siamese cat. But by all means, this doesn't mean that this is gonna be static. We'll be able to replace this text and a workflow in a moment. We will need to unselect that this should be a private field. If you don't unselect that this should be private, you won't be able to make changes to this dynamic value inside of a workflow actions. So please just take the time to do that right now. The only other thing I'd like to do is just allow my users to determine what size of images they should generate. So OpenAI actually provides you with three different dimensions that you can use. And if you go to the documentation page, you'll see those here. So you can generate images in 1024 by 1024, there's 1024 by 1792, and then there's 1792 by 1024. They don't give you too many options, but look, I just wanted to take the time to explain how you could allow your users to select their dimensions inside of our tutorial today. So what we're gonna do is also update the static value here to be a dynamic parameter. So that means I'm gonna replace the static value with a less than symbol, and I'm gonna call this parameter size, and then I'll close it off with the greater than symbol. And if I click away, as you'll see, it's gonna generate a space to create a dynamic parameter. And of course, I'll just need to add a test value into this field. So once again, I'm gonna set that as 1024 by 1024. And similar to before, I'm also going to uncheck that this should be private. And that is everything we need to change here. Now, one thing you might also notice is that I'm not creating a dynamic parameter for every single field here. And a great reason why is because when it comes to things like the model, as you can see, I'm referencing the Dolly 3 model, that value is always going to be the same. It's not going to be dynamic, or I don't want my users to be able to select a different model. I only ever want to reference this particular model. So this value will in fact be static. Same with the number of images I'm going to generate. I only want to generate one at a time. Now look, after building all of this out, we're going to reinitialize our call here. And as you can see, my API call has been successfully initialized, so I'm gonna to choose to save this here. Now, something I should just quickly point out is that if you were to get an error message during this process, OpenAI will normally tell you why that error message has occurred, but a common error message might just be that you don't have enough billing credits on your OpenAI account. If you see that message, all you'll need to do is take the time to add some credit onto your account. 
So you could add, let's say, five or ten dollars to it. But if you have a brand new account and you haven't taken the time to do that, you're more than likely going to receive that error. So please don't stress. All you have to do is just go and purchase some OpenAI credits. From here, though, what I want to do is just jump back into my Notion checklist. And we're going to tick off that we've finished creating our API call. And if I can be completely honest with you, that concludes the hard part of our tutorial today. From here, we can move along to the part which I think is sexy as hell. This is where we get to review the UI design and build out the workflows that are going to power this entire feature. So this part is going to look incredibly familiar to you if you have been using Bubble for a little bit. So what we're going to do is jump back into my Bubble editor, but I'm going to open up my design tab. Now in my design tab here, this is the application that I previously shown you in the demo at the start of this tutorial. So as I mentioned before, I just created something like a small blogging platform. And for every single blog that someone shares, they can add a title, a body, as well as a thumbnail image. So these of course are just standard text input fields. And then I've got a picture uploader here. But as you can see below our picture uploader, we also have this text that just prompts someone that if they don't have an image to upload, they can generate a custom thumbnail. Now, when someone clicks on this text, I have a hidden group that's going to be displayed below that. And so this is the group where users can add in values for those dynamic parameters that we just built out within our API call. So for the very first field, it's just going to be a basic text field or I should say an input field. And this of course is where someone can type out their custom prompt. And then below this, I have a drop down menu, which displays all of the dimensions for an image that someone can select from. Now, if you remember inside of our OpenAI documentation, there were three different types of dimensions. Dolly 3 currently doesn't support any other dimensions at this point. So you'll just need to copy across each of these three individual dimensions into your drop down menu. So you can see here, I have all three versions pasted in and they're all on an individual line. Now I've kind of just skimmed over how I've designed this page because to be honest, that's not really important. I'm sure you've built out your own platform or specific use case and you've already taken care of the design process or the design aspect of your build. What I'm interested in showing you though is how we can build out the workflow to generate a custom AI image using Dolly 3. So when this generate button is clicked here, we're going to create a brand new workflow. Now, please ignore all of the existing workflows on this page. These are just used to display things like my hidden group. They're not really relevant right now, but inside of this workflow, the first thing we're going to do is head on down to our plugins actions. And what you'll now see is the option to reference our API call. So this is where we can connect to our OpenAI API and use the Dolly three API call. And as you'll see, because we've added two dynamic parameters, this is where we can change those values. So when it comes to the prompt and the size of this image, we've of course given two input fields on our page to our users that they can add custom values in. So all we need to do is reference those input fields. So I'm just going to delete this static text here. And for our prompt, I'm going to choose to insert dynamic data. And I'm just going to reference my multi line input or my standard input, the prompt its value. So that's just where someone's going to type in their custom prompt. And then for the size of this image, I'll insert dynamic data and just reference my drop down image dimensions, its value. Now at this point in time in our workflow, Bubble's going to send this information through to Dolly three, Dolly three is going to generate an image and it will send that image back to Bubble. But we need to be able to do something with that image. And so when it comes to my blogging platform here, look, there are multiple different ways in which you can save that image. But at this point in time in my specific use case, and look, this might be different to yours. I don't actually want to save this image in my database right away. Instead, I'd like to just display a preview of this image inside of my picture uploader here. Now I'm sure that in your own application, you might actually want to save that image directly in your database. And look, I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But because my blog post does not yet exist in my database, I can't attach it to an existing thing or an existing entry. So what I need to do is just store it in a custom state on my page and then display a preview of it inside of my picture uploader. Now, look, I apologize if you're not familiar with custom states, but I'm not here to teach you that today. I have a dedicated tutorial that covers that, but a quick 101, a custom state is just a way to temporarily store data on your page without having to store it in your database, which is exactly what I want to do today. 
because my blog post does not exist in my database, I need to store it on my page temporarily until I actually create that blog post. So what you'll see is that if I double click on my overall page, so my page is called Dolly, if I open up my element inspector, what you'll notice is that I have an existing custom state and this is called generated image. And of course, it's just an image here. And so what I need to do after I've generated an image is store that image in my custom state. So if I go to my workflow tab, after we've generated the image, I'm gonna type in the word state and set the state of an element. The element is going to be my overall Dolly page and the custom state is going to be my generated image. Then from here, I'd like to reference the image that was generated in step one of my workflow. So I'm gonna reference the result of step one, it's data, the very first and only item within that data that it has generated. And I'm gonna pull the URL of the image that was generated. Now, after setting this custom state, what I'm also then gonna do is make sure it can be displayed inside of my picture uploader. So what you'll see is that when I double click on this picture uploader, I'm referencing that custom state and I'm just displaying that image as the dynamic value here. So once there is a picture stored in my custom state, it will be shown as a preview. Look then finally inside of my workflow, there's two additional steps I'd like to add. If this hidden group is currently being displayed, I'd like to hide it and then I'd like to reset the input fields. So if I just jump back to my workflow tab, I'm gonna to choose to toggle an element, that will be my group, and then I'm just gonna to choose to reset the input fields of that group. Now I've rushed over those because they're not super important to our process today, but at this point in time here, we would in fact be able to generate our very own AI image. But before we go ahead and run a preview of that, I just wanna quickly jump back to my Notion checklist and just tick off that we've not only finished evaluating how we're gonna design our app, but also how we're gonna build out the workflows that will power this feature. And as you can see, the very last thing I wanna do is just explain to you how you can now save that image in your database. So if you jump back into Bubble here, what you'll see is that I have a separate workflow that's going to run when the publish post button is clicked. So let's say someone's taken the time to add in a title, a body, and they have in fact generated a custom AI image using Dolly 3. When they're ready to publish this post, I've already created a workflow. What you'll see is that this is gonna be pretty straightforward. There's nothing too fancy about this workflow. All I'm doing is creating a new entry in my database. So I'm creating a blog. And inside of this blog, I just have three bits of information. And in fact, if I quickly just digress and open up my data tab, I'll show you what this data type is going to look like. So under my blog, there's three data fields. There's the body, there's the thumbnail image, which is an image, and then there's the title. So it's nothing complex. Over in my workflow then, what I'm doing is just obviously matching all of the input fields on my page with the relevant data field. But when it comes to my image, I'm just referencing the value of my picture uploader. And of course that picture uploader is getting its value from my custom state. So the process of actually saving an image generated by Dolly 3 is the exact same as where you would save an image using a standard picture uploader. Then from here, I just have an additional step which is gonna send me through to another page in my app where I can view a list of all of my blog posts. But that is it, it is truly that simple. What I'd love to do now though is just run a quick preview of this application so you can once again see how it's going to function with everything that we've just built out. Over in a preview of my app, I'm just going to once again create a blog post. Now when it comes to the title of this post, I'm gonna call this Why Optimus Prime is Taking an Early Retirement. You won't believe it. Super scandalous, I know. But look, you gotta give the people what they want and they want drama about Transformers. Then when it comes to my body text, I'm just gonna paste in some dummy text here. And then of course for my thumbnail image, I don't actually have an image of Optimus Prime to upload. What a shame. If only I could generate an image using Dolly 3. That's exactly what we're gonna do. I'm gonna select on this text. It's gonna open up my dynamic fields here. And look, I'm gonna paste in the exact same prompt that I had used in the initial preview of my tutorial. So it is a photorealistic image of the Transformer Optimus Prime sitting on a cruise ship drinking a cocktail, surrounding him with fans wanting his autograph and taking pictures. For my image size, once again, I'd like this to be a perfect square. So I'm just gonna set this as 1024 by 1024. I'm gonna to select to generate my image. It's gonna run that workflow and send this dynamic value through to Dolly 3. It's then going to generate an image and send that back. And look, it has just generated that image for me. And to be honest, I actually much prefer this one than the first one. I love that Optimus is still half truck, half robot. 
Now from here, I'm gonna choose to publish my blog post. It's gonna run that workflow, save that data in my database, and then send me through to a page where I can view that particular blog post here. And just like that, that is absolutely everything I wanted to cover within this tutorial here. So I'm just gonna quickly jump back to my Notion checklist and tick off the very last thing, which was learning how we could save an image into our database. And just like that, you now have a fully functional integration with OpenAI's Dolly 3 model. And just like that, you now know how to integrate Dolly 3 directly inside of your Bubble app to generate AI powered images. As you can see, the whole process wasn't too complex. It's nothing that we couldn't handle inside of Bubble. If you wanted to stay up to date with any additional Bubble resources I share, I'd always recommend hitting that subscribe button on my channel, so that way you can be the first to know whenever I drop a new tutorial. In the meantime though, I just wanted to say a massive thank you for taking the time to watch this specific video, and I wish you all of the best on your own no-code journey.